Well, when WCW eventually got sold to WWF, it felt like everybody went back. Hogan went back, Hall and Nash, everybody. And they never, they never brought you back at any point. Was there any conversations? Is there a reason why you think they never gave you a shot? Uh, don't really know for sure. Um, I th a lot of it, <laughs> I don't know. I think, in a way, Hogan just was, didn't want me to be there. I don't know why, but he just, you know, he didn't, he didn't help. He didn't, he didn't put in a word. He didn't do anything as far as for me goes at, at all. And, and he had Vince's ear. So whatever, you know, whatever he would suggest, whatever he said, that's what they were doing and stuff, you know? So, you know, I don't know what happened, but he, he, um, he didn't, uh, he didn't help. Do you think over, because obviously your association with Hogan over the years, there was lots of good points to it and there was kind of bad points to it. Overall, do you think the association helped you or hurt you? Both, you know, both ways. People don't understand is <clears throat> coming up in those early years and, and I was the, the factor that helped to get Hogan launched to where he was making money. I was the one who drove every day. I was the one who led the workouts in the gym, trained every day, went and got food, on the, you know, did everything to help him be a, a top, top guy. And if I, I, I don't know, it may not have went so good if I hadn't have been there all those, all those years delivering him, feeding him, training him, taking him day after day after day, month after month, year after year, helping, being, being there, Johnny on the spot all the time, all the time. And, you know, if I hadn't have been there, it might have went a whole lot different, you know. And my wife's the one who really like, told me that one day, says, you know, it's it's really crazy, but you you way underestimate your, yourself. You, you helped him. He it wasn't like he helped you. You actually helped him. And after I thought about it for a while, I was like, God Almighty, you're right. You're really you're right. It's. I mean, because obviously the, the the public perception out there is that you guys don't really get on anymore, or the relationship's not as good. Do you think there is a reconciliation for you guys? Because with the history you've got, or do you, or or not? Oh no, he yeah. he hit on my wife in in his kitchen with his wife there. I mean, I don't think we're swapping doing some weird. <laughs> <laughs> he's standing in the kitchen at his beach house, and he's telling me and my wife how he likes to lube up his. Dick with olive oil, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you know, and and my wife is, is from Boston, and she don't mince words, and you know, she basically told him where to get off at, and you know, told him she says, "I'm only here for one reason, that's." Brutus Beefcake. I, he says, I came because I wanted to meet Terry Bollea, my husband's friend, lifelong friend. That's who I wanted to meet. She says, I don't know or care who Hulk Hogan is at all. And I guess his ego, his ego was so Bruce, he couldn't even face her again. So basically, he said, Brutus, you're welcome. You can come over, but don't bring your wife. I was like, yeah, you know, that doesn't really work for me, pal. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> have, have a nice day. And, and you know, and after that, he, he really, he had a murder, 14 back operations, had both his hips replaced, had both his knees replaced. He, he fell apart and, and <laughs> you know, I was like, I, I was glad I wasn't part of it. I, I enjoyed being... Uh, uh, out of it for a while. I mean, it was a, we had great years. It was a tremendous story. And 
I thought we would always be friends forever, and he turned his back on me, and and that's it, basically. And I said, you know, it, you know it's too bad, but, you know, it ain't going to change my life. I, you know, I love my wife, and she's the best, and uh, and I do it everything exactly the same. I do it all again, and, uh, you know, to hell with them. <laughs> So, my last question for you is, you end up in 2019 going into the Hall of Fame with WWE, and for years, there was, you know, you've talked to us, there was no mention of you, really, there was no, you weren't in video games, you would have action figures, because you made a deal with, like, the, the toy company, but you were just never really acknowledged, so, how did it come about that you kind of were back in the fold, what did it mean to you, if anything, to come back, and what was the experience like at the Hall of Fame? Um, well, I, you know, the, the Hall of Fame thing... Somebody had pranked, pranked me in 2009, I think it was. They called from the WWF office in Stanford, Connecticut, and so the caller ID came up, WWF, you know, boom, boom, boom. And somebody said, yeah, but Bruce is going to be in the Hall of Fame. So, like, all my family, everybody who's going crazy, I come home, yeah, you're going to be in the Hall of Fame, you're going to be in the Hall of Fame. They called and said blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it was a rib, somebody joke, some pr somebody pranking, pranking me from the WWF headquarters. And, you know, the family is all, like, crushed, you know. And they, they, somebody, somebody would do that. That was a dastardly deed. And somebody would have the balls to do that. And, and, you know, and I didn't know why, because I, I, there's no reason that I, I messed with anybody there. I didn't, you know, it's nothing, I hadn't had contact, you know, and Hogan had his problems. He had pissed the rock off so bad by using the N-word, uh, or uh, you know, and, 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 and saying some real stupid <laughs> And they, well, they, they took him out of the Hall of Fame, they took him out of the, out, out, off the, out of the books, they took him off. He was he was, you know, shunned from the company. And when that when I did finally did get the call to be in the Hall of Fame for real, I requested that he we kicked around a lot of people, but that he would induct me. Okay, but they said there's not going to be any. Uh, people would be inducted because everybody, Stevie Ray and those guys, they had somebody they wanted to induct. Honky Tonk Man had somebody he wanted to be inducted by. Everybody had somebody to be being, they wanted to be inducted by, but they weren't letting anybody else be <laughs> an inductee or like, and, except for Hogan. And that basically used me coming, coming into the Hall of Fame to get his foot back in the door and start back doing a lot more stuff with the company. And then he had told me and J uh, Jimmy Hart, okay, man, we're going we're gonna to be a team now, the three of us. We're going to, you know, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you a deal. Brutus, you have a contract and, you know, you'll be, you'll be set up. You'll be taken care of, you and Jimmy and me, and we'll, 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 we'll run the country again like we, and, and do stuff, everything. And then... Nothing happened. Him and Jimmy, yeah, they got deals. They got, you know, they, they got money. And they, they left me out of the picture. And it was like, that was a really pretty disappointing deal. You know, the Hall of Fame thing turned out great and everything. They, they, Sports Illustrated had, uh, they wanted to announce me on, uh, on, on TV, do a special thing. They were trying to build it up real big and make it real, real cool. And then nothing it was, you know, and hey, <laughs> I'm still happy, still healthy, still doing it, doing my thing. And you know what? It, all that doesn't really mean anything. You know, I'm, I love the wrestling fans. Like, look at you guys out there sitting there, <laughs> listen to me ramble on here, but that's why I like our business. 
you, seeing you guys, getting to hang out with you, getting to talk with you, answer questions, take pictures. Ogren doesn't like to do that. He doesn't want to be around you. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to do that. You know, he's only there if he can get $300 per signature or $500 or some ridiculous amount of money. And, and, and then he takes off. You know, he doesn't, want to, he doesn't really want to, 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 to be intimate with, with, with the fans and talk one-on-one or, or, or whatever. And, and that's where we part of ways on, on that kind of thing because I love the fans are what makes us in this business. It's the loyalty of the fans always coming out, always going, buying that magazine getting that action figure, getting the, renting that, that DVD or something. And, and it's the fans that make our business so incredibly great and, and so fun. And, and, you know, and to me, this is, this is why I keep, you know, just keep on keeping on and just, uh, like I get to come out and hang out with you guys.